I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Wow. Yeah. Um, Jonathan Huberdo is a front runner for the Hart Trophy. Mr. Fikowski, I gotta go to you on this. Fourth in the NHL in scoring. He has um, 42 points in 33 games, including 11 goals. Um, he's only 11 points behind Connor McDavid, who plays a lot of power play time with Leon Dreisaitl, who was also number two. And then Alex Ovechkin is number three, also with 50 points. But you ask me, it, it, he's got to be. I, I'm buying a round on this. It, 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 I, you could talk about Alexander Ovechkin and what he's doing for the Capitals. You could talk about McJesus and Dreisaitl. But – with Alex Barkov missing the time he's missed, Jonathan Huberto has got to be a front runner for the heart right now. He is playing so damn good, and he's improved his defensive game and his game along the board and everything. He's just rounded himself out to a great player, a really, truly great player. So uh, I'm buying around. Anthony? Um, I'm going to go round two because, I, I, I like, right now, um, my three finalists of the season ended today for the, for the heart. Um, would be would be McDavid, Huberto, um, and Ovechkin. Um, and AZ actually, ju- he just brought up Troy Terry. I, I was just gonna say Troy Terry is kind of like a dark horse MVP candidate right now. I mean, he's he's he, he's been nothing short of sensational in Anaheim. But um, I, I have too many guys ahead of him. Yeah. Uh, but but and that's not take anything away from Troy Terry. Troy Terry, you know, kind of. It's kind of doing what like with Drysdale and Zegers came up. People talking about them a couple of years ago when when Terry and Steele were coming up for Anaheim. It's kind of a similar situation. And for a while, you thought, okay, well maybe maybe they got it wrong with Terry, even though he's a fifth round pick. But um, he's he's really been sensational. But to back to the question, Huberto has been the Panthers' best player in my opinion. Um, I think he's just as valuable as Barkoff, um, and I think he, you know he should be a finalist when it's all said and done. Yeah. You, you guys have convinced me to upgrade. I was just going to say beer, but you know what? I'm going around because I I haven't seen that him dominating the games as much as he has, but the, according to what you guys have said, numbers are there, and uh, I, I got to hand it to him for, ta- uh, for stepping up when uh, Barkov was out. And that's – I mean, if you could get an MVP in Florida, <laughs> I mean, that'll certainly help that market. Because it was great to see them play the Rangers this week and hearing Panther fans excited, not just when Ranger fans were were getting excited because there were goals getting scored. All right, going to a guy who is on an expiring contract and could change a lot. Mark Andre Fleury will change the balance of power in the Western Conference. Filk started off. Uh, I mean, he can he can definitely help. Uh, I mean, he can help a team like Edmonton make the playoffs, possibly even win a round. I mean, if, if Flurry can steal a series for them, he would help. But again, does Edmonton give up the pieces that Chicago oh, for Flurry? I know he's really at the end of his career, and but he's still a very very good goaltender. Still one of the upper echelon goalies in the league. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say. I'm going to say beer only because the way the words balance of power and change balance of power mean like just completely turn the tide for a a, a team. I don't know if he does that, but he definitely helps. So beer. Anthony. I'm actually going to go. I'm actually going to go shot only because I think even if he went to a team like Edmonton, um, I don't think it would cause the Oilers to all of a sudden be, you know, favorite and, you know, kind of go all the way in the West. Um, I I think he can make a team that needs goaltending better, but I don't think it's going to be anything drastic where he's going to go save a team um, and really, you know, upset the, the balance of power in in the Western conference. So um, not taking anything away from him at his age, he's, he's still a good goalie, but I don't think he can have that type of impact. I'm going to go shot as well uh, because I went through the Western Conference teams. And as I said before, I have no faith in the Edmonton Oilers anymore. So let's just get that done. Except that one guy that called in on good, bad, and ugly. Check that out, guys. And uh, the, the the Oilers, as far as, as they go, they're the ones that badly need a goalie. 
uh, Colorado could use him, but they need Darcy Kemper to go down in order for that to happen. So who knows? And I kind of could see it, possibly the Carolina Hurricanes trying to upgrade the goaltending <laughs> when it gets over. And they're in the Eastern Conference, so that's another reason why I would switch. But again, you know, Chicago's got to look to move Mark Andre Fleury. Otherwise, I mean, you got him for nothing, and he's going to cost you. Guys, I keep talking about this all the time. And Anthony, I'm going to start with you on this. Kale McCarr, did you see that goal the other night? Yeah, wow, yeah. Night? That that that's a ridiculous move. Kale McCarr will win the Norris Trophy this season. Um, you know, I, I think I think I'm going to go around because I, I feel like it's just a matter of time before this guy wins Norris. Um, and he's he's. I think he's easily the best offensive defenseman um, in the league. Um, maybe, uh, I guess, uh, maybe Yossi is up there. Um, but I think Makar is the most talented and most skilled defensive offensively, uh, def- offensive defenseman in the league. Adam Fox, we all know how great he is. He won the Norris um, you know, last year. I think he's better than, than Makar defensively. Um, but I just think, with the way McCarr is playing this year, I think it's only a matter of time where he gets enough votes to win it. Um, and to win a and to win a Norris Trophy back to back would be really hard. It hasn't been done, you know, in a while. Um, I think Fox will win more Norris Trophies in his career, um, but I I just feel like this this year McCarr's name is ticketed all over it to win. Um, you know, he's he's one of the best five skaters without considering position skating in the league yeah, for my money. Um, and he's just really, really good. But that move, that that goal, granted, he beat a fo- – it was a forward Kirby Doc who was on him there, not a defenseman. But still, I mean, he he, he just embarrassed Doc. Um, and then he just, just totally just, you know, faked Flurry out of his shoes. I, I even thought Flurry had the angle too on him. But he just beat him. Bilk. Yeah, he's easily the best offensive defenseman in the league, but his defensive game lacks. And he also plays on a pretty stacked team, so I think that's going to take away votes from him. Uh, If you ask me, he's not the most important player on that team, and he's far less important to his team than Adam Fox is to the Rangers, Victor Hedman is to the Lightning, and Roman Yossi is to uh, the Red National Predators. So I'm saying a shot on this. Um, he, the, point, he, the points are going to be there. He, he's going to get votes. I think he finishes probably top five in voting, but I don't think he finishes as a finalist. So. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go, uh, you know what? I'm going to go with what I said at the beginning of the year, and I'll say it again. I'm buying everybody around on this because – I think the Canadian press wants to give Kale McCarr the Norris Trophy hell or high water this year, and it doesn't matter if Adam Fox is better. It doesn't matter if Victor Hedman is having a resurgence season or Roman Yossi or all these other guys that are having great years. They want to give it to Kale McCarr because he doesn't have one yet. And then they see a play like this, and they go, oh, he's got 18 goals, I think, right now. I forgot to look it up. Goals. How much? 14. 14, okay, because I know he had 13. But, He's over a so, point per game. So. Right. So, you know what? Just They're, they're going to try to give it to him. It's it's Adam Fox this year, by the way. But, by the way, it's, there's other guys that are within mentioning of this, including Aaron Ekblad, who should really be able to say something about that. Aaron Ekblad's another one. I think Aaron Ekblad's probably going to be top five. I think there's going to be a ton of competition in this top five this year. All right. And our last topic of Bar Talk today, guys. Canada's virus policies are going to cost a Canadian team a shot at the Stanley Cup. <laughs> Mr. LaRocco, I got to go to you after you make that reaction. Uh, well, yeah, because I just disagree with the policy so much. However, I actually, believe it or not, I actually think this is a shot because, yes, you know, no, you know, no fans, you know, relates to, you know, not maybe giving the teams the extra boost of momentum, winning games leads to points. So I, I get why you're seeing that. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I don't, I think these, these Canadian teams are eventually going to get these games that are postponed, um, later in the season when they can have fans. So I think they are going to get played in front of, you know, at least half full buildings. Um, but I don't think any of these Canadian teams are going to win the Stanley cup regardless, in my opinion. Um, so, 
yeah, it sucks. I think they're they're really silly. Like the Winnipeg Jets. Um, I know Phil, uh, Mark, earlier you mentioned if it was the 250 fans, it wasn't Calgary. I think it was Winnipeg that had that, which is totally pointless. But you yeah, the 250, you know, a thousand fans, you know, half capacity. It's all just so silly. I I, I get it. Cases are up, but you know. It's not as this strain, if you want to call it, it's not as serious as some of the prior ones. Um, people, more than majority of the people are vaccinated. So I don't see why you're continuing not letting people live their lives. Um, but in terms of the on ice, I really don't think it's going to make any Canadian team, you know, miss their shot at the cup because for a couple of games, you know, they had to play in front of no fans or limited fans. Phil, I'm going to say, um, shot because of the fact that I, I just don't think that I like Anthony said I don't think any of the Canadian teams are going to win I think Toronto and Calgary have the two best chances at winning the cup for a Canadian team but I I don't know if I see either of those teams making it all the way uh, Toronto's improved uh, big time defensively and Calgary it plays a really really strong defensive game but they they need help offensively. They need they need scoring depth out, outside of like uh, Gaudreau and Kachuk and Lindholm in order to take that next step. Monahan has become a, a nothing player, so um, I, I don't see either of them doing it. So I'm going to just say shot on that alone. Okay, and I've done this way too often, and I propose this question, but I'm buying everybody around because I'm going to go back to one one of the lines I said before. You can switch around games. You can delay games. You can say you're going to get them back uh, later in the season. That's not the way schedules work. There's reasons why guys sit down in office, carefully construct these schedules before the season. I was talking about the New York Islanders before that likely I'm thinking next month, they're going to have a seven game West coast trip. You might as well shoot the players. That's the way it's going to be. And you know something? Wait until the, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs and all the other teams that are dealing with the, the postponements, the swapping of games in and out. Here's a good question for you. Why is it okay for them to play in America but not in Canada? Huh? Why is, why is that fine? So is this player safety or is this, this is just madness? If it was about player safety and about public safety, you'd cancel the games altogether. But they certainly want the money. They, they want their cake and eat it too. And it's stupid. And you know what? I hope, I hope I'm not censored by Facebook on uh, whatever, uh, YouTube for this. But it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. And if I'm, if, if I'm uh, Austin Matthews, if I'm a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, and they're actually good this season, they were, they were in the top five for a while. And even with Jack Campbell, and he's got a maximum of the 30 games played in this season, 36, I think it is. Then, I mean, and you're thinking maybe you got a shot at a cup, and then you have politicians come around and take it away from me. I'd be pissed the hell off. And you know what? I'm pissed off, and I don't even have a horse in this race. So, anyway, Justin, rethink the policies. So, any event. Do you guys agree with me? Am I just an idiot on a rant? Yes, but that's a different story. And uh, are are the Rangers, should they keep the Banishad in that Panarin spot? Keeper Bell should play every single night. Throw it all down in the comments below. Winter Classic, is it still great? I'll answer that for you. It is. So just remember, please like, share, and subscribe. Yes. Always. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.